What have you been doing? I have been driving round Benidorm for the last three hours on a 20-foot high bike looking for somewhere to get off it. Your face is all red. I know it's all red. I've been baking in the sun covered in bloody tinfoil all afternoon. Oh, there you are. You took your time. Yeah, listen, Mel, I, I think there's been a bit of a misunderstanding. Oh, I. Yeah, when you came out here to open this shop, I assumed if you'd wanted me to be involved in it, I'd have come out here with you. How could you do that? You've been looking after the sunbed shops at home. Yeah, exactly. So now, I'm on my holidays. Right. Well, if you can afford to have a week without pay... Whoa, whoa, hang on a minute. You said you were going to pay me for this week. But I was going to pay you because you were going to be working. I'm on holiday with my family. Do you think I've made Mel Harvey Leisure Industries Limited what it is today by going on holiday? I'm not spending my holiday renting out electric wheelchairs to fat, bone idle alcoholics who are too lazy to walk to the pub. All right. Wasn't talking about you. I never said I wanted you to sit in this shop. I wanted to appoint you head of publicity and promotions. It would only take a couple of hours a day. I'm sorry, Mel, it's not fair on the kids if I... Head of what? Publicity and promotion. Out and about, meeting the public. The showbiz glamorous side of the operation. I wouldn't expect you to sit in a shop all day. Head of publicity and promotion? Absolutely. Couple of hours a day? Never more than three. Well, why didn't you say? Is it Mel's Mobility Shop in the heart of Benidorm? Grand opening, 6 p.m. Free bottle of Mobley with every order. Is it Mel's Mobility Shop in the heart of Benidorm? Grand opening, 6 p.m. Three bottle of bubbly with every order. <laughs> Is it Mel's Mobility Shop in the heart of Benidorm? Grand opening, 6 p.m. Three bottle of bubbly with every order. What exactly is Nick doing? I told you, a bit of publicity for the shop. Right. It's just that he's been gone a while now. He's lucky to have a job. After scabbing off the social for so long, he should be on his knees thanking Mel for giving him back a bit of dignity. <laughs> Where were you? You what? You weren't at the shop. I oh, know, I closed it till the grand opening. I needed the ladder to get off the bike. What have you been doing? I have been driving round Benidorm for the last three hours on a 20-foot high bike looking for somewhere to get off it. Your face is all red. I know it's all red. I've been baking in the sun covered in bloody tinfoil all afternoon. Excuse me. We were just wondering, is it fancy dress in Neptune's this evening? Only nobody's told us. Piss off. Why don't you come to the front of the building and ask someone to get me? But yeah, I'm not stupid, I thought of that. But I couldn't turn the bloody music off, nobody could hear what I was saying! Excuse me, whatever it is you're selling, you can't do it here. I'm not selling anything. I'm on my holiday. Well, I'm supposed to be. Come on, let's go in. We'll get the kids up. They're having a siesta. Hang on a minute. I've not finished yet. So I kept driving to find some shade so I didn't burn to death. Went to top off a perfect day. I realised I was about to run out of petrol. Well, how did you get down from this bike, then? I had to drive into the caravan park and jump off onto somebody's roof. Well, they are, then. No problem. Hang on. I've still not finished. I don't know how old this caravan was, but I went straight through the roof. Oh, my God. <laughs> But well, the good news is nobody was home. The bad news is it was locked from the outside. It took me another bloody hour to get out of it. You haven't left that bike in the caravan park, have you? Left it there. I'll wrap it around your bloody neck if I see it again. <gasps> oh, 
<laughs> right, what are you two doing? Bloody hell. I don't remember calling Ghostbusters, do you? <laughs> Very amusing. Imagine I need a word. What about? We need to tell you something. Janie, please, give me one more chance. No, I told you, you sucked. Please, I have explained. I, I, I was in bed all night with a fever. Oh, I'm sure you were in bed all night. But not how do you think. I swear to you, the reason I didn't go to work last night was because I was not well. Janie, please, I need this job. Oh, shit, I get changed. Hey, I didn't say yes yet. Thanks so much for coming, Kate. Shame we can't fly back together. Well, you have your return ticket paid for. It would be insane to buy another one. Well, I can't buy another one because I don't have that kind of money. Well, that's sorted then. Oh, God, I almost forgot. I've got you something. Martin, I've got to go. Wait there one minute. You ordered a taxi for the airport? Yes. It's outside. Thank you. As you both know, I came back to Benidorm with the idea of setting up some kind of business. Very brave for a man four foot eight in Cuban heels. Can we just listen to what he's got to say? Instead of setting up my own venture, I've decided to buy an established business here in Benidorm. Can't tell you what it is yet before I've sealed the deal. But we want you to know that Madge and I are relocating. Relocating where? We're buying a business in Benidorm. Where do you think we're relocating to? Skegness? I don't understand. Crying out loud, what's there to understand? Me and Mel are buying a business and we're staying in Benidorm. For how long? Permanently. You can't just not come home. You need to discuss it. Why do we need to discuss it? What's it got to do with you? What's the UK got to offer us? Bad weather, the credit crunch and miserable people. Why didn't you talk to us? Hey, look on the bright side. If they do stay here, that's two less miserable people in the UK. What business have you bought? I'm sorry, Jans. We can't discuss that before the papers have been signed. In fact, we're just off to do that now. I'll tell you what. Mick will go with you and I'll stay here and talk to my mother. I'm not staying here. I'm going with Mel. Well, we'll all go. It'll be a nice day out. If you think I'm spending the last days of my holiday chasing around after Donald and Ivana Trump, you can f*** off. In fact, I do need you to come with us, Mick. There are a few things I need to discuss with you. Forget it. There's a pool through there with my name on it. Well, I do have to hand over the UK sunbed shops to someone. Come on, you lot. These papers aren't going to sign themselves, are they? Hello right there. Who's it going? Hola. Wink McAndrew. What? Wink. McAndrew. I don't know what that means. No, man. That's my name. Wink McAndrew. Are you speaking English? Of course I'm speaking English, you numpty. I should have arrived on the coach, but there was a problem with my flight. I'm sorry, this just sounds like a noise to me. You've got to be joking me. You never had a Glaswegian booked in. Still just a noise. <laughs> you were right, pal. What's <laughs> What have you put in that? Tot of brandy. Instead of your nerves. There's nothing wrong with my nerves. I just haven't slept. Well, don't you worry. The claim has been put in. What claim? Claim for all the stuff we had nicked. We didn't have anything nicked. You've had a blackout, haven't you? A lot of victims of crime have that. It's all part of being in shock. When you see the list I've made out of all the things we had stolen, it'll all come flooding back to you. What list? How have you made a list when we've had nothing taken? People can't pinch what we haven't shut got. Up, shut up, shut up, shut up! Are you McGarvey? I am he. I have your insurance claim for me. Oh, yeah? Mr. Uh, 
A problem? No, no problem at all. I just thought I'd let you know that we're entering it for the 2009 Booker Prize for Fiction. What are you talking about? I'm a victim of crime. Please state items you wish to claim for. Two cameras, two watches, one gold, one silver, three iPods, two mobile phones and a laptop computer. Oh, my God. Did you forget to put down a speedboat, your set of darts and your bendy bullies? Look, you might go on holiday with a spare pair of knickers and a packet of Johnny's, but some of us do have actual possessions to take with us. Give us it here. What are you doing? Thank you. What did you do that for? If your brains were dynamite, you couldn't blow your hat off. Oh, you poor thing. I hope you gave him a thump back. Well, it all happened so quickly. I didn't really have time to think. And is that when they tied you to the hot water pipe? Yeah. That's how they found that Terry Wogan, wasn't it? Kidnapped and chained to a radiator for five years. Terry, wait. Is that what they said to him? Sarcastic buggers. It's not like it was going to go anywhere. I can't believe one of them was that girl who was with Martin. You don't think he had anything to do with it, do you? No. Did you not see him last night? She cleaned him out, apparently. Took his money, passport, the lot. But she had an accomplice. The one who roughed you up, wasn't it? Did you give the police a good description of him? Yeah, bloke in his 50s, lived in face, long, shaggy, sort of 70s hair, a Hawaiian shirt. How bizarre. That sounds just like the chap who took our mobile phones to fix them. Oh, yeah, we should keep an eye out for him today. Oh, dear. I suddenly feel very stupid. Suddenly? I can't believe you can't just loan me some money so I can at least get to Alicante and get another passport issued. I've had everything taken. We haven't got any money to lend you. You should think yourself lucky you're not getting lynched. It was your girlfriend that robbed everyone. She wasn't my girlfriend, she was just a friend. Some bloody friend. Here, please. Hey, Jeff, how are you? Late night last night. No. Really early one, actually. Really early. Jeff had a big date last night. I didn't have a date. Last night in the old town. Mm. Lovely romantic dinner he was having. It wasn't a romantic dinner. It was... It was a business meeting. I must say, we didn't really have you down as the broad-minded type. Is she pre-op or actually in transition? Oh, God. Bless him, he's got all shy. I don't know. Young love makes them all giddy, doesn't it? Right, <laughs> sunbeds. You've not said much about your date last night. I told you it was all right. I was speaking to that Scottish fella and his wife in the lifts this morning. Said they'd bumped into you and your lady friend. Why? Yes. Said you made a very nice couple. Did they? Said something about her being a bit older than you. And possibly... Now, I think the word was pre-operative. But I don't know what that means. Look. Met someone on the internet. We met up, and she turned out to be a fella in a dress. All right. You happy now? Oh, son. You know you can tell me anything. And I didn't tell you, because it was a misunderstanding. All right. Is that him? Yeah, that's him. He's in property, so we're tying up a few deals, and he's off tomorrow. Marcus Snelling, business intelligence consultant. What does that mean? Means he's got his fingers in a lot of pies. 
Never show all your cards at once. Oh, I'm supposed to be relaxing today, but it's hard to switch off. You like me, work all it. You all right? Oh, yeah. My business associate, Mick Garvey. Nice to meet you, Mick. Marcus Snelling. Yeah, I've heard all about you. Oh, yeah, you've been talking about me, Mel. Well, I've just mentioned you were in property. Yeah, it's a real shame it's not your thing. I've just heard of another property available to me, but I've only bought the cash to secure the one I knew about. Shame. But only take 5,000 euros. How'd you work them figures out? I've got this estate agent for you. No, you're not interested. No, we're not interested. Well, hang on here. You may as well tell us. I've heard enough. Sorry about him. He's very naive when it comes to business. Thanks a lot. Anyway, if you feel like turning five grand into one hundred, you've got my card. Cheap flight. How's it going? Everything sorted. I've been working on the mark. They'll give me anything I want. I be well. <laughs> mm. Son, I want you to know I know how difficult it's been for you. And I want you to know I'm so proud of you. I just want you to be happy. And if that means you being with a man, and getting one of them civilised partnerships. Well, then, I'll stick by you. I just need to know one thing before I put my foot in it tonight. Are you ready to come out, son? I say, son, are you ready to come out? Yes, I'm ready! Good save, woman. You all right? I'm so proud of you. It's going to be a wonderful night. Good evening, ladies and James. I said, good evening, ladies and James. Good evening. That's better. Well, some of you may already know we have a fabulous singer here at Neptune's tonight, Benidorm's favourite, Sean Foster Connolly. But before that, we have an old friend of Neptune's who would like to say a few words. Let's give it up for Nodin! What's going on? <laughs> Thank you, love. Ladies and gentlemen, there have been many times in my life when I've been proud of my only son, Jeff Maltby. She's me PA. His many achievements in life have been impressive and varied, from Lancashire indoor hang gliding champion to the only double winner of the home skirt meat plate fighting competition without the need of hospitalisation. <laughs> but these brave accomplishments pale into insignificance when I tell you that tonight's the night is finally decided to stand tall and announce that he is a wonderful, happy, proud, gay man. You won't. Well done, son. And this one is for you. Young 
Someone here. Name? The Oracle. I mean, Jack. I mean, I mean, Lysley. Is this a group booking? Lysley. It, it'll be under the name. Lysley. Two people. This way, please, sir. A drink while you wait, sir? I like it, please. But of course, sir. Come on, Jeff. Don't mess this one up. You never know she could be the one. Hello. You must be Jeff. Leslie. Yeah, I'm sorry about earlier on, but uh, I had a flat tyre. I do my own servicing and uh, I'd forgotten to grease my wheel nuts. <laughs> so I've been on my hands and knees all afternoon. <laughs> nice here, mate, isn't it? Lovely. Yeah, when I first came to bed at home, I thought it was all English breakfast and karaoke, but you'd be surprised. I haven't been. Now then, uh, before we go any further, something I want to tell you, Jeff. OK. We chatted online a lot yesterday, and, well, there was one thing I wasn't completely truthful about. Really? Yeah. I want to get it out of the way now. I mean, we don't want an elephant in the room, so to speak. No, I want my map. No. But I've got a sneaking suspicion you know what I'm gonna say. Not right across my mind. Jeff. I'm not 35. Really? No. I wasn't 100% honest with you on that score. Right. I mean, I've been nervous about telling you that, but, well, you, you haven't done a runner yet. I can't move. Well, I must say that's a weight off my shoulders. Mind you, and say not, I may be in my 40s, but I'm not dead yet. As me old grandma said as they were trying to zip up the body bag. <laughs> uh, do you know, I don't know what it is, but I feel very relaxed with you, Jeff. Some men give me the creeps, you know what I mean? Absolutely. But with you, well, I just feel I can let my hair down. Uh, you any good at massage? No. Oh, I did a course just a couple of years back. Uh, are you familiar with shiatsu? 
I mean, I've just done one. Well, it's a finger pressure massage technique that releases toxins from the body. I know that sounds a bit technical, but uh, at the end of the day, all it involves is one person lying face down on the bed while the other one gives him a good poke. You think you'll be up for that? Sir. Mademoiselle. Champion. Now, I usually have two starters here, because I only smoke. 